So is this lens the best lens for beginners on a budget? I know the older Tamron lenses didn't get that much respect back in the early 2000s, but this one definitely deserves the respect, especially if you can find one for under hundred bucks. I bought mine locally for $63 and I just had to get it because I've been looking for this lens for a really long time. In this video, I'll show you why it's probably the best lens for you, especially if you're new to photography and if you're on a budget. And just getting straight to the specs of this lens, it has a 67 millimeter filter thread. The maximum aperture is f2.8. The minimum aperture is f32. While it is a little plasticky it feels well built and it gives you much more of a confident feel too the plastic feel shouldn't scare you away though because the image quality you get from this lens it's actually quite amazing and onto the, one of the good things i really like about this lens is that it's constant f 2.8 throughout the focal ranges so that means from 17 to 50 you get that constant f 2.8 aperture whereas with the 18 to 55 when you're going from 18 to 55 the aperture changes like this and at f2.8, you have the ability to get better image quality as well. Another thing I like about this lens too is the image quality. The image quality is much better than I thought it would be. It's not super sharp, but for the age and the condition of this lens, and the first few shots really made me really like this lens. Another great thing I really like about this lens too is the bokeh. It's actually not too bad, especially at f2.8. And it's pretty smooth throughout all the focal ranges too. And another thing I like about this lens too is the weight and size of it. It's actually pretty lightweight and the, for the size, as you can see here with the 18 to 55 and the 17 to 50, it's actually pretty comparable in size, but the 17 to 50 is just a little bit bigger. And just going to the bad things, it's not really bad, it's just me nitpicking. If you're looking for a super sharp lens, this is probably not the lens, but it's not that bad at all. Once you bump it up to F4, it's probably right when these images start getting pretty crispy and sharp too. It doesn't bother me, but for maybe for some it's going to be a deal breaker is the vibration control it does not have vibration reduction or vibration control which is the vc and another thing i didn't like about this lens too it is a bit noisy this is just a slightly older model this one does have the af screw so if you do have nikon d3000 d5000 or the d40 the, the d60s any of the nikon dslrs that does not have the autofocus screw this lens will not autofocus but i know that the newer tamron 17 to 50 lenses will be able to autofocus with those cameras right now i'm just using this 17 to 50 with my nikon d90 the d80 the d300 the d200 the d70s basically all of my nikon dslrs that have the autofocus screw i can utilize this lens with make sure it is not the one that has the autofocus screw like this and i'll show you here that this lens does have the autofocus screw so you do need the autofocus screw on the dslr to utilize the autofocus with this lens if it does not have it make sure it's compatible with your nikon dslr like the d3000s d5000s and so on just going to the distortion because at 17 millimeters it is a little wide but from what i'm finding i don't mind the distortion i don't see the distortion if you have seen distortion in the previous images i've shared comment below because i don't see any it is not too bad uh, from what i'm seeing I do like the 17 millimeter focal length. It's growing on me too. Now let's talk about the vignetting. The vignetting is a pretty apparent, especially on super bright days, but it can be corrected in Photoshop, which is pretty nice. And it's also not that bad as compared to the other lenses I've used. I know that my uh, Sigma 10 to 20 wide open, the vignetting is pretty bad, but once you stop it down to like F8, it's not that bad at all. And with this lens at F4, you barely notice it. And let's talk about the chromatic aberration. That's probably one of the downfalls on this lens. Personally, I don't think it's that bad, but to perfectionists, it might be a deal breaker. But for some brand new to photography, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Let me know in the comments to see if you even spotted some in the previous pictures in this video. Overall, just take a look at these images and let me know what you think about this 17 to 50 f2.8. Personally, I would replace this lens with my 18 to 55 lens. It's totally worth the extra cash, especially if you can find one for the right price. The image quality you get from this lens is significantly better than the 18 to 55 entry-level lens and the bokeh is definitely one of the things I really like about this lens too especially the f2.8 and the first time I used it at f2.8 it kind of blew my mind especially when I could compare it with the bokeh and just how contrasty the images were at f2.8 but this was just looking through my LCD screen and when I was looking at it on my D90's LCD screen I liked it a lot and it just kind of sold from there on and one of the things I really do like about this lens is the focal length range from 17 to 50 I think it's gonna be an excellent starter lens for someone brand new to photography or someone that just wants a walk around lens. The 17 to 50 is just wide enough and just gives you that range of 50 millimeters where it's just good enough for street photography or for portraits. And I took this lens with me to a car show and at car shows, you're pretty limited on space too. At 17 millimeters, it was just wide enough to get the shots that I wanted, which I really liked because at 18 millimeters, it was just not that wide enough 
by 17, it must be that sweet spot between 16 to 18. That 17 for me personally is a sweet spot where I can just get those shots that I wanted. This is one lens I would have loved to have used when I started out in my photography journey. This is one lens I would have loved to have learned with and used. So if you have had this lens, please comment below because I'd like to read your take on it too. And like I said earlier, I know the older Tamron lenses didn't get that much love or respect, but this one definitely earns it. Especially if you can find one for under 100 bucks like I did, but just be careful with the deals that you find online. Just make sure that it's from a reputable source or company that will sell you this lens for under 100 bucks. I got really lucky with this one. I waited for a really long time because this is one lens that I always suggested for people too. So if you're interested in buying this lens, I do have a link in the description below where you can purchase it. Also check out the car video I did with the Nikon D90 and this lens in my channel too. And if you have any questions or comments about this lens, drop them below and I'll try my best to answer them. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe because that really helps me out too. And if you made it this far in this video, I really appreciate you watching and seriously, thank you for watching.